Good afternoon everyone. I am Mr. H. Thank you for joining me. When you're looking at differential equations, there's a very important application with regards to population growth. So in this video, we're looking at basic differential equation, formulating a basic differential equation, solving it as well for population growth examination. Think about everything in this way. If you're starting with a specific and a single bacterium, you have a single bacterium, it has a certain doubling time. After that period of time, T, it doubles into two items. You started here with one, now you have two. Now consider this, rather than starting with one bacterium, you started with two bacterium, which each have the same amount of doubling time. That is, they double at the same time. Now when you examine it, you start here with two, but you're ending up here with four. What does that tell you with regards to what's going on? It tells you something very clearly and that is this. Let's do some abbreviation. Population growth rate. Population growth rate. The rate at which a population grows is proportional or you can say directly proportional to your population. And let's just put this little S over here. The population start. That is how much you started with. I started here with one and I ended up with two. I started here with two. I ended up with four. And that clearly tells you given these assumptions that are being made that the population growth rate, the change in population over time is proportional to how much you're starting with at the very beginning. Keep that in mind as we now go through the rest of this particular video because this particular assumption, which is an educated assumption, comes into play in the remainder of this video. Now in this video, since we're talking about population and time, we don't need to be utilizing the X and the Y. We can look at P's and T's the change in population or change in time. Let that be our derivative factor, just as you were seeing dy over dx, which was equal to y prime, this here can be equal to p prime. dp or dt, change in population or change in time is proportional as I was alluding to earlier, k and then p. What does that p mean? What does that k mean? Let's talk about it. It's rather obvious that here we're looking at the change in population over time simply from the variables that you see. This right here represents the rate constant which comes into play. It's no different than any other constant you can calculate. Given a certain number of variables, you can calculate that constant, the rate constant. This right here can very easily imply your initial starting amount. Like I was telling you, if you started with one bacterium, it came into two after a period of time. If you started with two, it became four. So this right here applies or implies your initial starting population. Now what you're really doing is looking at a differential equation and your differential equation is this right here, dp or dt is equal to kp. You have to solve this. And when you're solving it, it clearly is the first order. It's not something which looks like this, d square p over dt square. It's not second order, it's clearly first order. So you know now, when you're looking at the first order differential equations, we have a variety of means of solving them. We have the direct or simple integration method. We have separation of variables. You can look at homogeneous equations, linear equations, and Bernoulli's equation. When I'm looking at this, I'm looking here and thinking about this separation of variables. But the beauty of all of this is the variables are almost already separated. What are the variables here you're seeing? Rather than X and a Y, I'm seeing P and T. If I do DP over P, is equal to k dt. I've separated the variables. I've brought the p here along with the p. The rate constant can stay exactly where it is, but I've brought the time on the other side. After you've separated the variables, you remember you have to apply the integral. I already have a this dp, your independent variable. Now I have to do this. I have my independent variable here. Now when you've applied the integral signs, there's nothing more for you to do than to integrate it. You're really looking here at a 1 over p, which you know will bring the natural log p is equal to k. And here you're really looking at a t to the power of 0. Then you do plus 1 or plus 1, n plus 1 or n plus 1. And that will bring you your t variable. And that right there is the end result of your integration. But do not forget this. kt plus c. Now, it's not good enough that we're looking at just this. We have to actually solve for p. And you can eliminate the absolute value. P is equal to, you take the natural log on the other side, you're looking at E. Now you're looking at KT plus C. See E, the exponential base to the power of KT plus C. But this right here by means of properties of exponents is same thing as E exponent KT times E exponent C. You see how I've separated it? 
I've separated these two, but there's nothing wrong with what I've done because if you use the properties of exponents when you're multiplying, the same basis, the exponents add. Now we do a little substitution. Let A equal exactly what you're seeing over here, e to the power of C, a substitution. Therefore, P is equal to e to the power of K, T, A. I don't like the appearance of this because I want to look at it. P is equal to A, e to the power of K, T. Now, everything here with respect to time. Now think about this right here as very close to being the outcome of what we want. This differential equation is being solved such that we're coming to a function which represents that differential equation and we're almost there, but we can write it in a better way. We can write it in a better way by means of this assumption. If you were to solve or evaluate at time zero, you are putting zero here. This is not O, this is zero as in the numerical number zero in places of t. So you're having a e to the power of zero, which is equal to a. You can do a little substitution. At p o, at time zero, you have equal to an a. Therefore, you can just bring this into the mix. p, your population at time t is equal to population at time zero, e to the power of k t. And this can zero, population at time zero, does not mean you're starting out with zero. It just means you're starting out initially with this examination. As I was telling you at the very beginning, you could have started out with that one bacterium or two bacterium, but you had an initial population, and that right there is your population at time zero, and therefore population at time t is equal to all of that. Notice that the exponent here has a positive sign, which means considering that there are no limiting factors or constraints, your population can grow indefinitely. As those limiting resources or constraints come to play, your population will obviously level out, but there's no negative over here as you would see in the case of radioactive decay or nuclear decay here. Everything is assuming to be exponential in nature, but everything is going to increase with time. So this right here represents your differential equation for which this here represents the solution to your differential equation. And that's how you can go about developing a basic differential equation for population growth by means of separation of variables. And this is something you've seen all along except it was never formalized in the sense of it being a differential equation application. So now what do we do? Now the application of differential equations to these population growths is not necessarily hard because once you've arrived at this point, you know this is nothing more than calculator strokes. And you know this because you've seen something like this in terms of chemistry, you've seen something like this in terms of biology. The same equation in different forms can apply to a variety of different chemistry and biological phenomena. Anyhow, Let's examine this. This right here represents the function for which that original differential equation was true. dp or dt is equal to kp. Given this equation right here, there's a certain time. There's a certain time at which your population after a certain time will equal to twice your initial population. And you know here, we're talking about doubling time. The time needed for your initial population to double. If you started with one, you're ending with two bacteria. From one bacterium to two bacterium, there's a doubling time. How do you go about formalizing that doubling time? If PT is equal to 2PO, look right over here. You'd have 2PO. I'm using O, this is really zero or O. It, it's just a matter of convention. 2PO is equal to PO e to the power of KT. Take this on the other side, the PO. That will cancel out. 2 is equal to e to the KT. Now bring in the natural logs. Natural log 2 is equal to KT and then T is equal to natural log 2 or K. And or, or let's do this, or k is equal to the natural log 2 over t. You would have to know what the time is, but you can easily utilize the time and this equation, natural log 2 divided by that time, given the time, to determine what the rate constant is. If you know what the rate constant is, then of course you can determine the doubling time. This right here would be your doubling time. The time needed to double your population. Anyhow, let's just do a quick application. A single question over here will bring this into conclusion with that single question. So the question we look at is right over here. As you see, there's a certain bacterium, bacterium A. It has a doubling time of five hours. If the initial population count is just one, you're starting out with a single bacterium. Find the population after time t, that time t being 48 hours. Now you know you're being provided the doubling time, which is five hours, but you don't have a rate constant. I'm looking at something which looks something of this form. I have a natural log two over time. I have time. We can keep everything here in hours. You don't have to start changing to days. We have to find the population at time t. Therefore, we have everything we need to get the procedure started. I'm erasing this because you don't need this. I'm erasing all of this here as well 
because again everything will stem off from this equation right here. I have a doubling time over there which is already provided. I need to find the rate constant which is natural log 2 over doubling time which is 5. All you have to do is do this calculation and we'll have this calculation right after we bring out the scientific calculator natural log 2 divided by 5. I have 0.1386 but I'm saving this value because the more decimal digits you save the better is your answer. Anyhow, now we have to find the population at time t, but what is this population at time t? Population at 48 hours is equal to, you're starting out here with 1, your initial population amount, which is 1, e to the power of 0.13863 t. And t over here is going to be what? It's going to be 48. Now, before we do this calculation, let's do a little mental math. I'm starting out here with 0, I, I have 5 hours. If I'm starting out here with 1, after 5 hours it's going to double, then after another 5 hours it's 10th hour, right? Then it's 15, and then you know it's 20, then 25, then 30, then 35. Now this is area where I'm kind of running out of space. Then 40, then 45, then 50. Here I have a 1, here I have a 2, here I have a 4, because we're doubling, right? The population of this bacterium is doubling. I have a 2, 4, I have here 8. I have a 16, 32, 64, I have a 128, 256, this is me getting a rough estimation of what's going on, 512, and then 1024, my answer should be somewhere here in between these two because 48 falls right in this area, we should have a value somewhere between 512 and 1024, this is like a quick check just to show that when we doing this computation at the end we'll be on the right page in terms of our answer, so let's remove this part and do this calculation. We have over here a population at time 48 hours. Remember our units here is in 48 hours is equal to E.13863 times 48. And we'll do all of this on the calculator because I saved that original value right here, natural log 2 divided by 5. That value is 0.1386 and everything else. I'll multiply that by 48 and I do the shift exponential base on this, activating the exponential base and I'm getting a 776. So starting out with one bacterium after 48 hours, it having a population doubling time of 5 hours, we'll end up with 776 bacteria and that right there would be our answer. As you can see this right here is a basic differential equation model for population growth but it indeed is a good one because it's reliable. You can see our answer came very well right here into this region of count that I was looking for and we were right. But again remember how everything has come about in this video. We started out here with the differential equation and we converted that into the function for which that differential equation is true. We utilize this relationship to determine the doubling time for which then we could go through this procedure here to determine the rate constant. And that rate constant comes into play to help us determine population at time t. And that's about all I want to present in this video. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.